All right, looks like we are all set here. So, um, good morning, everybody. Let's go ahead and get things started. So, happy Monday to everyone. Hopefully, everybody had a great weekend. Uh, we're kind of in our late October season, so you're going to see a couple more uh, outfit choices from me over the next week. Uh, hopefully, everybody's enjoying the slightly cooler weather. We've got a couple of cold fronts that hit uh, last week. I think some of the southern states are starting to really feel it in the U.S., but all in all, uh, welcome. This is Engineering the Markets. It is a um, uh, Monday, so October 24th, 2022. And as always, we're going to take a look at how the market's been performing over the past week. We're going to look at some levels of interest to get us started and also some potential reversal signals that are starting to really show themselves fully off of our CPI lows. You'll notice the title here is a stock market bottom in, and we'll certainly talk about that a little bit more in depth. But before we get into all that, let's start off as we always do on Monday with a more quantitative approach. And that is of course the S&P 500 index expected move for the week. Now we do this every single Monday. We look at it throughout the week. We talk about anomalous behavior like breaches and moves in and out of the expected move. All of this kind of culminates into risk. Where is the risk in the market, especially in the option market, which drives the SPX behavior? It is a uh, option only tradable product. And with that, we can see some of that risk culminate usually near the end of the week. So on Friday, you'll notice a little bit of a breach from our previous week's expected move. The market was able to advance, not only technically, as we saw sort of an engulfing of our pullback over the previous three sessions, but we also saw a quantitative expected move breach. And I don't necessarily have it marked here, the deviation of that move, but if we look and see, last week we were expecting about $124 of expected movement. What did the market actually move? If we look at the close, 35.83, and we look at the close on Friday, about 37.52, it showcases that the market moved approximately 170 to 180 points from close to high, or sorry, close to close. That's kind of the, uh, the more accurate representation of the move. Now, <clears throat> when you look at that, and when you understand that the option market was pricing this much volatility throughout the week, but then you look at a Friday session, and Friday was a very a significant sort of trading session due to its range. The market on Friday essentially moved roughly the equivalent of the expected move for the entire week. And this is notable because this is often what can occur on very high open interest Fridays. Uh, last Friday was a monthly expiration series for the SPX. So there's a lot of open interest that needed to be rolled, managed, and ultimately mitigated throughout uh, new positions. But along with that, we had a little bit of a market catalyst. There was discussion of the potential for the Federal Reserve not necessarily to pivot some of their interest rate hike decisions, but ultimately trying to pause or possibly look to reduce future meeting expectations. And we saw the uh, Fed fund futures market price that in, along with the uh, equities market, see a little bit of bullish relief, potentially speculating what could the next round of rate hikes look like into the remainder of the year. So these um, 
triggers, the catalyst from Friday, the fact that we had a lot of open interest uh, being rolled and ultimately closed out, a lot of this provided fuel for a more correlated market rally that did get us outside of the expected move. So yeah, thumbs up from my hat, definitely from Carlos. I, I agree with that approach. So what does this mean for this week? Well, a few things for our volatility readings. We are seeing a slightly reduced expected move this week. And that can seem a bit um, odd given the type of week we're leading into. Uh, this is earnings week, pretty much the most significant market cap weighted earning cycle that we have. A lot of our tech and consumer discretionary stocks that hold significant market cap weighting to the S&P are going to be reporting this week. And with a reduced expected move, it's a little uh, tricky to look at this market and say, yes, volatility is coming off completely. You know, the risk is starting to abate. And obviously that leads to a more bullish lean moving forward. For now, I would look at some of the technicals and some of the more quantitative uh, readings that we're starting to see along with the spread of the actual moves. And this is something that's kind of important to remember. Usually when markets are correcting, whether it be to the long side or the short side, the volatility changes during that correction. You might have things like an orderly advance into a more disorder, di disorderly correction. Um, whether it be by price or time is really dependent on the, the technical setup. And I think here we're seeing pretty significant intraday spreads in this market. The, the range of your intraday trade is pretty wide. Um, so much so that it's starting to disrupt this quantitative approach that we take, which is every time we're looking at the expected move week over week, we're trying to um, essentially quantify the risk of the market, how much volatility is normal and what would be out of the normal. Yet on an intraday basis, we're getting the equivalent of a weekly expected move in that one session. And it's a little bit of a note regarding the type of correlated markets that we've been seeing. Usually things are either all bullish or all bearish on one single session. There is very little in the way of um, individual sector kind of standout outside of some small, um, uh, what's it called, uh, huh, amplitude of the move, the, the size of the relative move. But for the most part, most sectors are either moving very much in line with the S&P it might be moving quicker or slower, but those intraday movements are almost always correlated. And usually if you're looking at something like an index watch, um, this might not actually show at this point in time. Yeah, it doesn't show from last week. But anytime you pull up a uh, distribution of what stocks are moving higher or lower on the session, you're going to notice most days there's going to be correlation across the market. Usually 90 plus stocks in the S&P 100, 450 plus stocks in the uh, S&P 500 and the NASDAQ equivalent, um, all of them either advancing or declining in that session. You'll have some standouts with earnings, maybe a uh, independent catalyst, but ultimately the market's moving together. So, whenever we're looking at the expected move and it's more using this tool, this analysis appropriately, um, one thing to remember is you can be using this to gauge your premium selling sort of ranges. Uh, where should I be looking to be um, essentially data driven in my uh, selling of call and put premium? 
but it also tells you where can I be expecting um, significant volatility because breaches outside of this range tend to have a lot of open interest on its, uh, in its favor. And we saw that on Friday with the actual expiration of the monthly series. But I think it's more about this market correlated move. Things aren't really independent right now. Um, I, would, I would argue that most of the time the, the S&P and to some degree a lot of highly correlated byproducts, they're all moving together, um, either up or down. And that volatility is still sort of intertwined between a lot of things that we track. So for this week, um, you know, have your numbers, have your expected move bounds, and that's going to definitely drive some of the trade behavior where you skirt around expected move ranges once you get to them. Friday offers the potential for gamma related risk to really be realized in a market. But more so than that, the technical side, and as we kind of shift back into just our S&P ETF, the technical side can also drive that behavior as things begin to align. You'll notice things like this potential reversal, which is obviously looking more and more like a potential head and shoulder, inverse head and shoulder. Can this work? Absolutely. You know, it certainly is a bullish signal for the market where we're seeing a downtrend into a more corrective reversal. And that reversal has some early signals, lots of wide spreads near the lows as there is the bearish party starting to essentially cover out, the bullish party starting to engage back into the idea of a rally, and obviously the catalysts that are driving some of the short-term signals through these levels. So for today, and as we kind of look into how we opened this morning, um, the futures markets did open relatively positive. Uh, they started off with a fairly decent um, open. They pushed up to about 3880, 38.13. They drew down, you know, the corrected back into Friday's prints. And now we're seeing another return of momentum back to the upside. The volume is also indicative of some potential interest here. So today can be bullish. And I think with yesterday, <clears throat> uh, Friday session, that certainly is the draw. You know, the idea that the market would have to essentially signal another short-term top for us to trade against. But more so than that, the open interest in this area, as we've been discussing, is high. If the S&P is trading in a more correlated fashion, it's probably because a lot of trading firms, uh, desks that use the S&P to sort of manage portfolios and hedge risk, uh, whatever, whatever way you want to kind of think about how a firm behaves, we'll kind of pull up a time frame here you know it's it's obvious that the s p is building energy here and the core idea is that once this breaks it'll probably have a little bit of uh, momentum to it um, and that's obviously beneficial for us because momentum can be get more momentum we can sort of trade on one side of the market so long as that rally or decline lasts uh, it provides trends. <clears throat> Sorry, it provides trends for us to trade. And in a correlated market like we're seeing, it doesn't really matter the product that you choose. Um, you know, individual stocks will more than likely move with the rest of the market. You'll have some standouts. I would say energy always kind of deviates or kind of skews a bit to uh, the other side throughout the. Uh, the S&P's movement, but regardless of the actual product you're choosing, a lot of times when you have these correlated breakouts, 
these waves of highs and lows, most stocks are going to be following the leader. And it keeps you on one side of the market during that period, but it also allows you to establish counter trend movement whenever the market basically changes back into a position of strength or weakness. Um, so I think the key for trading this market as we kind of enter into a more catalyst driven earnings week is don't be afraid of some of these trends. For one, if we get a push outside of this range, it's likely going to trigger more momentum. We have a lot of open interest built here. And what we're looking to see is whether we can actually breach this roughly 380 area. Where would be your next target? You'd probably want to go five by five. So every five S&P points would be significant areas of interest, two and a half dollar sort of mid range, but the volume profile facilitates upward movement. Um, we just need to get out of this region. If we don't, remember those rules that we keep talking through week in and week out, which is any rejections in this market, especially bullish rejections, have led to fairly significant downside. The type of rejections we're seeing are fast. They're often quite heavy in their response. And remember, if the market correlates during that sell-off, there's little to no stock in the S&P that's going to provide a significant bounce behavior. You know, you, you almost need the entire market to change in order to see things like reversals or V bottoms, anything that's going to be um, a well-suited intraday trade idea besides the actual trend. So this is the risk of the market right now. Let me finish my, uh, had some cough drops for this morning, so make sure those are good. Okay. This is the risk of the market right now. And the reason I bring it up in this nature is as we're seeing a lot of very sensitive products um, that can drive the S&P to move higher or lower. For example, bonds. We're seeing bonds not only crash this year, you know, the, the argument here is that the bond market is in a pretty deep state of decline. But the downside is advancing quicker these days. Over the past couple of sessions, we've actually seen products like TLT drop from about 100 all the way down to a low end of 92.25 on Friday session. Volatility is high in the bond market. You can see this whether you're looking at things like implied volatility studies, which are actually increasing throughout these declines, very steep sort of moves in these, um, these relative readings. As you go back in time too, you can see that the bond market doesn't often carry implied volatility like we've been seeing this year. These readings are equivalent to some of the more severe readings in June, but then you look across the board and the last time we saw volatility like this was as we were exiting the pandemic crash. So the bond market is one of those indicators where obviously, yes, rates are rising. We've you know, heard that paradigm and that, <clears throat> that quantitative approach to what the market's gonna experience during rate advance. But in the counter argument, the moments when the market maybe has these risk reversals, the potential for things like bond traders to start to capitulate and where you're actually seeing some of the higher volume readings in products like TLT at the lows. Be looking at these to spark rallies across the equities market. You know, especially if we see TLT start to recover, it's less about the fact that the bond market is bullish during that time and more about the impact it can have to the equities markets. 
these are some things that might drive the trade, and especially if we're trying to exit this uh, compressed or just tight region of the SPX, the bond market might be one of the initial triggers. Um, and certainly we're seeing some of the technical signals that this is more likely than not. Um, anytime you have this sort of high volume reading on momentum and especially with the gaps that we've been seeing, this is like momentum begetting more momentum, more and more pressure into a, a climax, an area of uh, parabolic nature. Usually you're gonna see things like your moving averages pretty spread out as well. <clears throat> this is just a, an oversold chart. And even if this market moves sideways from this point forward before seeing more decline, it's definitely hitting extremes. Um, <clears throat> the equities market might respond to that accordingly. And we might see some things like very minor pullbacks inside of a larger uptrend you know for the 10-year or the 30-year rates they're definitely hitting those significant extremes as well and these are some notes for the week you know watching these products would be advantageous if you're looking to put on some trades that maybe have uh, some of the correlated effects to the bond market you can also trade the bond products themselves you know for example i'll be looking at selling premium against the TLT, one, because it's a great technical setup, and two, because the implied volatility facilitates it. We have high volatility in the bond market, it's worth selling at this point in time. Um, another thing, of course, has been the dollar. You know, last Friday was a notable declining session in the dollar. But keep your macro trend in the back of your mind. You know, obviously, the dollar is still not even losing the short-term trend line, which would be right around this area. We would like to see that come off more significantly for some of the uh, heavily influenced trades, like any of the metals being a bit more responsive off their lows, or things like the actual equities market responding in kind as well. Um, <clears throat> you'll note that the period where the dollar declined during September to early uh, October, that actually was a fairly bullish period for the S&P. That sort of marked um, <clears throat> this period here where we did rally for a couple of days. Obviously, that did pull in again, but it's noting the when and the why. Um, even if it's a short-term move. Um, and then last but not least, I think for the purposes of talking about volatility, we need to once again just kind of look at the ball futures. Now, for this analysis, I've been mentioning how markets, especially in volatility um, laden products, they're often mean reverting. And for volatility, it's notable that we've been in a period of backwardation for about three to four weeks at this point in time. The vol futures flipped. That's been some of our wider intraday trade, some of our more bearish overall declines. Vol futures this morning, at least how they're, they're looking to open, are about flat. And this has been kind of the case um, since last week. They've been starting to uh, come in a little bit and usually this is a moment of significant decision if we can see vol futures return to a state of contango which is just your front month priced a little lower than your back month that alone can provide some of that additional fuel for a correlated s p remember as vol increases, you'll get a lot of dynamic hedging in S&P products. And that's been driving a lot of the downside on particular sessions, especially when you have expected move breaches. Now that this is coming back in, and if we can see further confirmation 
don't be too surprised if the S&P has sort of that counter rally, that more grindy move back to highs or back to the upside. And it's going to feel a bit more um, relaxed. It won't be as dramatic as some of our sell swings, but this has to remain in that state. Um, <clears throat> it's often one of those moments where they say that as volatility gets into a state of backwardation, as the markets get into that sort of period of short-term fear, those are often some of the best moments to buy. They're not necessarily the best investing moments, but for trading and for taking off your bearish trades, it's usually a moment of um, reflection into whether or not that advance is going to continue. Because as this mean reverts, and we've seen this quite a few times this year, this has been sort of our bread and butter move for the VIX futures, they tend to wave through periods of relative lows, relative highs, and then mean reversion somewhere in the middle. You know, usually about 25 on a vol future, uh, forward looking vol future, and then, you know, somewhere around the 25 to 24 region in the VIX. That's been our high to low trade most of this year. So for today, for the rest of the week, um, I'm going to basically leave that discussion alone. It's been a lot of what we've been covering these past couple of weeks. I think the notion of it is important, but overall what people are looking for this week is a little bit more clarity into what was discussed on Friday. Is the Fed pause or potential reduction going to come to fruition and what sort of impact can that have to the S&P? We've seen the, the um, uh, Fed fund futures price that in last week. So, you know, coming into November, we're still looking at 75 uh, basis points is our main uh, probability. But if you're looking a little bit out in time, the potential for 50 points in December, you know, assuming 75 in November is 50-50. You know, it's now at a point where the market sees a little bit of a reduction, even though <clears throat> just last week, this was priced much higher. You know, you can see the, the significant um, changes in these probabilities over the past week, day, and then a month, which at that point we've, we've kind of looked a little too far out. But um, these, these changes are driving trade and to some degree, the trade is binary. It's in the S&P. It's focused in a lot of these products. Um, so one of the reasons why we analyze the S&P so much is because I believe that you're going to get the most edge from doing so. So with all that said, I think today we'll go ahead and call it here. Tomorrow, I'm going to bring up really quickly that 2008 comparison, kind of show where I believe we are located, just relative to those uh, technical pricings. And then we'll discuss the idea of a market bottoming itself out in these levels relative to our earnings this week, which of course are gonna be significant drivers of um, after hours gaps and just some of the morning volatility that we'll see. So for this week, obviously uh, get prepared. Hopefully everybody's been having a great trading uh, month so far. We'll talk more tomorrow. And if you like what we've discussed so far, please like the video, uh, subscribe to the channel, and as always, leave comments for any suggestions. So we'll talk more then. Stay tuned for pre-market prep.
All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pre-Market Prep. I hope you're having an amazing morning. Hopefully, you guys had an incredible uh, weekend. Good morning, Norm. How are you doing today? Hey, good morning, buddy. I am. Uh, I'm doing all right. It's nice outside. We're getting some much needed rain. Had a good weekend. How are you? Doing good, man. Doing good. Had a great weekend as well. A little wet out here today. Um, nice. Other than that, can't can't complain. Um, Guys, hope everyone had an amazing weekend. Um, we have a lot to talk through and go through today. It's just a lot going on in this overall market. Uh, thumbs up for Jared taking us to the market, um, engineering the markets every Monday through Thursday. So appreciate that. If we can show him some love there and get to our, our goal today. Um, let's dive into our gappers list this morning. A little bit in the red today, as you can see here. So a few things gapping down. Um, I noticed heavy on the Chinese stocks. China. Right? Yeah, China. China. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, you have to go all the way down the list of, I don't know, what are there, 15 on there? A dozen yeah. at least. And and everything down to, uh, what, Tesla I mean, maybe? except for, a, yeah, I mean, well, Taiwan Simi. Yeah. Um, Taiwan, everything there except for Taiwan Simi and the last one and Tesla, the last three or not, everything else is. So yeah. it's a nasty day. Yeah. Absolutely. So to dig into that a little bit, um, will lead us right over to the spy. Obviously, we, we had the best week in the spy. We've had a long time last week. We'll see how that holds. Uh, we've got a ton of data coming out this week. We've got a ton of uh, stuff coming out today. Not so much. Uh, Chicago Fed National Activity Index just came out, really hadn't done anything. We've got uh, S&P U.S. Manufacturing and Services PMIs coming out at 945. The uh, home price index tomorrow, consumer confidence tomorrow, new home sales on Wednesday, um, along with GDP for third quarter on Thursday morning, uh, jobless claims as we always do, and then PCE, which is a, a inflation read on Friday, all leading up to next week, which we have the Fed uh, FOMC meeting and their announcement uh, coming out on Wednesday. So it will be a crazy week. Uh, not to mention, uh, full of earnings. We've got GM Ford, we've got, uh, meta later, we've got Apple, Amazon. So it's going to be a busy week on the earnings front as well. So far earnings have held up pretty decently. It'll be interesting to see how those go. China. Uh, so China met, they meet every five years to, uh, elect their leader as probably most, if not everybody here knows this by now. Uh, in here, you know, every five years, uh, elect their leader and uh, elect. Yes, uh, exactly, Chris. Uh, finger quotes on that. Um, but they changed their constitution and, and made it okay, uh, made it able for uh, Xi Jinping to uh, take on an unprecedented third term. And uh, essentially, he has gotten rid of anybody that disagrees with him whatsoever, including some really freaky scene yesterday where he had sitting next to his side, a 79 year old predecessor to him as the head of China, uh, Hu Jintao, escorted from the room, uh, seemed unwillingly, you know, like they purged him. So a little bit. A little bit, uh, a little bit weird, a little bit concerning. Nobody really knows what's going on. They said it was for health reasons. He didn't seem like he was having any episode or anything. So uh, it's killing China stock. There's a couple things, GDP over there uh, getting hit, but also this consolidation of power and nobody uh, around uh, to disagree with him has uh, tanked their market pretty hard. So it's been in a, a downtrend uh, pretty much all year. And now this is... Uh, getting worse so should be interesting yeah yeah and i know exactly which clip we we're talking about I saw that and um and it's it looked just strange like something out of a movie type thing so well um, i mean it, it's it, not quite to the degree but you know there's that the 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 most chilling of all time and i had this conversation over the weekend with john um you know, uh, I don't know if you've seen it, but the film of when Saddam Hussein came into power in Iraq yeah, and had yeah. 66 people that were part of the government take, a, you know, name called 10 at a time taken mm -hmm. out of the room with many of them executed, yeah. um, you know, uh, just to essentially cement him, him in power and all while he smoked a cigar and smiled. 
Yeah, so, yeah, I, I know that very, very well. And it reminded me not, not to that extent, but it reminded me a little bit of that, right? It's kind of like just complete control. So, well, for we'll anyone. see. We'll see what happens, guys. Obviously, the markets overall is not liking this. As you can see, everything Chinese related as far as things will be trade, Billy, Neil, JD, everything out here, Baba, Baidu, all down significantly. We're not talking about two or three percent, guys. We're talking about 15, 16, 14. Yeah. I mean, these, and these are, are the, big numbers. You know, these are the these are the American depository shares. The uh, these companies um, you mostly they trade in um they trade in China as well. Their stock market overall was down, I believe, six percent for mm -hmm. uh, Monday. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so definitely going to be interesting as we see that. On the upside of things, we're seeing a few MYOV. I know we looked at in the past, and these other three, the other three, I can't remember what they are. They must not be great, but we will dive into that. Um, all right, let's get to it, guys. Uh, let's get rid of our watch list from uh, Friday. Uh, control A, Control X is going to get rid of that, clean that up. And we'll start looking at what's capping up this morning. We'll start with PCVX uh, and uh, PCVX today taking off here up 73%. So nice uh, pop this morning. Uh, Norm, what's the news on this one? Not a low flow, sitting at 39 million shares traded. No, they, they had some news on a... Um phase one and two um vaccine study for I believe it's for pneumococcal uh pneumonia but don't hold me to that all right so we see here they're they're rocking and rolling so definitely in play I, i'm still going to add this over to our risky pile guys i mean the way this thing is moving you got to be very careful so i'm going to throw it on here into our low flow risky pile uh, MYOV this morning, uh, we, we, we seen plenty of action on this one in the past. I, I'm not really a big fan of the way it moves. This one's a buyout but, brother. Oh, buyout. Oh, it's nothing happening yeah. here then. All right. Yeah. So nothing to see. Um, MT and this morning, they are oh, horrible, uh, to say the least. This is really bad, uh, pre-market action. Um, no volume. Let's move on to, uh, and they're gapping up seven. Where's the gap up? Seven percent. Yeah, it's just pretty bad. Okay. Uh, NSC this morning, another one looks like a block trade. So not much going on here. I think MTN was also a block trade maybe. Yeah. So it's just, again, not really doing anything. Let's look at FRO today. So FRO up 2.3. Nothing good here. Daily. I mean, if you want to push something here, You sound here, like daily. a broken record. I do, man. At first, I, I knew those three were not going to look uh, anything great, and they haven't. Uh, FRO here, nothing great, guys. I mean, you got a nice daily, but that's about it. This pre market's pretty dead right now. So let's see what's gapping down. Now, obviously, as we just went through, Chinese tickers are all over this gap down list this morning. Um, I'm just going to pick two of my favorites, and that's going to be Baba and Neo, right? I'm going to pick those two. Uh, I think they are the ones that trade uh, the best for me personally. But you can see JD's got some good volume. EDU, guys, this is the one I would stay away from. This, this could be dangerous. Um, down 12%. Look at the volume. It probably has the worst volume out of all of these. Um, just be careful with that. Uh, you got Baidu. Um, uh, you, you, Baidu can be okay at times. I've seen some of you guys trade that one. I'm going to add Baba to my list. I like that one. And I'm going to add Neo. I'm not going to go through so all one of these. Interesting yeah. note. Baba is below its IP, I, IPO price of 68 bucks from 2014. What was, what was in uh, Baba? Like 200, 300 bucks? I mean, this yeah, thing. It was up there. Wow, it's a 260 at least, right? Man, that is uh is that all time low or probably probably not, right? Um uh, we're getting close. Yeah, we're 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 I'm see now that I'm back here already on the monthly, I'm gonna mark it down. It seems to be like around 57, 59. So we'll mark that down so we'll save some time later. Um stock pigeon, not all time low. Thank you over on YouTube. Um, what is the all time low? Just curious. But uh we'll we'll yeah, we'll keep that one on there, man. This is um Man, look at this chart, guys. Yeah, I knew they, they were at 300 at one point. And since then, July 2020 has been nothing but a disaster here, heading back, heading at, down to 63. So not a good look for Baba there. Um, Neo on here as well. Again, hitting, I know they're hitting some big lows as well. We're down uh, to 10 bucks, 1026. So I'll be watching that one as well. All right, let's see some stuff that's probably not um, uh, Chinese related at the moment. TCOM is one that is down 11.1. Oh, uh, it's Chinese. That this Chinese? Oh, this is not trip.com trip is Chinese? I did not know that. All right, so this one's down to, uh, again, not a great ticker to trade, so I'll stay away from that one. NTES, no, no good here. Let's see, anything else? How about this one? MLCO, Melco Resorts, never heard of them. Hong Kong, China. Great. 
Yeah, never heard of him. Been known. Good. Uh, TSM. Now, TSM has been in play, guy. I mean, uh, there's a lot of stuff happening with the semiconductors. As you know, we've been talking about that for about two weeks now. So yep. this is typically not a great trading stock, but lately we've seen some good movements out of it. Look at the get some good trades on this. Yeah, yeah. They're getting hit. They suspended production of um, some chips for a Chinese startup because of the U.S. regulations. Okay, excellent. I forgot to turn something on here, guys. Let me see if this is um, working. Okay, pardon that. Um, let me see my YouTube chat clearly here. Okay, um, so yeah, so last couple of days, last, last week or two, um, even more maybe, October, they've been really active. Better than this year. Look at these daily candles, how small they are, uh, you know, less volume, but you're seeing some more activity now. So I, I don't, I won't add them to my list, but again, they, they, could, they could really be in play today. Uh, Tesla, obviously on deck, of course. Uh, Tesla has been amazing to watch. Tesla, not not. I, I this is kind of funny since everything on here has to do with China. Obviously, yeah. Tesla is not a Chinese company, but the reason they're down is because they lowered prices on vehicles in China. Oh, okay. So that that's affecting them as well. Some here, demand so. issues, apparently. Yeah, yeah. So it's a lot of competition out there now. It's a lot of competition. Um, but yeah, you can see here, guys, uh, down 2.8 this morning, 2.5 million. Tesla has just been, uh, again, great to intraday trade here. And we'll see. Uh, we'll keep that one on deck. Norm, well, we we have quite a few. Anything you like so far this morning? Not really, man. I got to tell you, it's... Uh, I hope, I mean, things will improve, but I'm not, I'm just not super stoked about anything. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Usually, it Tesla's does, but... my favorite. Yeah, I mean, I and Nvidia's been great just about every day recently. Um, they're trading pretty light this morning and only up a half a percent. So, I do like Still this looking. daily, though, right? I mean, we're slamming up against yeah. this previous day close. We'll have to see what the overall market feels like. I'm, I'll definitely add Nvidia, and we've been talking about Nvidia for some time. I mean, they just seem to be in play, or at least when they are in play, trade much better than AMD at times, more times than not, I think. So definitely adding NVIDIA to our list here this morning. Uh, all right, let's take it to the room, guys. See what you guys like today. Uh, Tesla is on deck, NVIDIA, and Netflix. Netflix, Gapfill. Uh, what is Netflix up to? Gapfill. Gapfill. Oh, you mean the... the I was, I was thinking about this we'll gap fill. You're talking about the other side, this gap fill. I did like, in, I, I do like the fact that NVIDIA has strongly gone through its 200 daily. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I, I mentioned that last week that it was resistance for a couple of days recently and hit its head on it and backed off. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, are you, are you, um, I'm talking mm -hmm. about Netflix. You've got NVIDIA up. Oh, you said you said uh, NVIDIA. That's why. Did I, I say NVIDIA? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. my mistake. No okay, worries, it's, I was like, the chart is not what I'm showing. <laughs> um, yeah, it hit its head on that 200 for a couple of days and then yeah. solidly went through it. I like that. Um, it could be interesting uh, for a move for some of that gap fill that was mentioned. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And guys, you guys remember Friday we talked about uh, Netflix and uh, I know the comments were, hey, there's no volume in the pre market. But we knew this thing was hot based on just the news and everything going around it. And look at Friday. It just took off. So sometimes you just got to uh, put everything together, all the piece of information you have. You have the news, you have the earnings, you had the way it was trading. Uh, you know, possibly it could have been great for a gap down, you know, either way too, right? For a sell down or a pop. And it decided to go the other way and look how clean that, that trade is. So yeah, Netflix. Is it, yep. Is it possible to adjust my volume down? I'm being told that I'm very loud and you're quiet. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me check something. No, nope, the issue is on my end. I'm too low. So I'm going to come back up, guys, here a little bit. Uh, I'm seeing my my uh, there you go. my and gain. You can turn is... us both down on, on the user end. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Check, check, test one, two. Mike, check. Perfect. All right, just look at the levels here and making sure I'm matching yours and we are. We should be good there. Sorry about that, guys. I might have put that down when I was recording something or doing something. Who knows? Um, all right, excellent. Hopefully, that, hopefully that's a little bit better. Thank you for uh, uh, mentioning that. Amazon this morning. Let's take a look at that. AMZN. Uh, AMZN. What do we have here? Yeah, I, I like the daily, right? Possible breakout this um, uh, this morning on it. So the daily is good. We're hitting a nice area of resistance. Volume-wise, you know, we're actually looking pretty good on volume as well. For this morning, six hundred thousand. So we can throw that on there. Uh, see where that goes. 
Uh, <laughs> Raph Silla. Now, if you could lower the gain on your hat, Carlos. Oh, yeah. Hold on a second. Let me see if that works. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, man, it's cloudy out here. I need to wear something to to be able to uh, to light up the day a little bit. Yeah. It's cloudy and 6 a.m. is still, you know, pitch black. Might I'm not used to that. You know? Landing on your head. Yeah, I'm not used to that. So, um, all right. Uh, what else we got, guys? Uh, NVIDIA is good. Um, the PCVX going to pop. Boy, that was... Uh, yeah, that was that was one that's how we have it here. Yeah, this thing is on fire, guys. Very, very careful. Um, this is moving very aggressive up 80%, 1.5 million. Definitely in play again, not for the as Storm would say, not for the faint of heart. So please be very careful on that one. Over on YouTube, what do we have, guys? What do you guys like today that we have not uh, looked at in our list? And Nvidia and Tesla are, yeah, those are two good ones today. They are they're on deck. Um, Neo, I have on deck. TSM, Jeffrey is another one that you can put on deck. It has been really good the last couple of days, so you can add that to your list as well. Uh, PDD and Billy, they're, they're again all Chinese tickers. Um, just pick your favorite on those, or whatever setup you like the most that might be showing on PDD and Billy. Then maybe the other ones that I have. I'm gonna keep Baba and Neo for now. I like those two because I traded them before, and I know they can trade uh, very well. Both of them are pushing up a little bit here this morning from the pre-market lows. Um, as you can see here uh in our youtube chat i don't see anything else how about um snap snap was uh interesting uh last week didn't do much on friday uh snap maybe maybe i just want to watch it i'm gonna put as a possible i mean it's got volume guys 1.3 million that's pretty good volume i just want to see where it goes from here after such a disastrous uh, uh end of the week last week with that gap down um, let's see what it does, if anything. I'm not saying we're going to have a gap close here. I think we just might have some sideways action, but might be, might be interesting to take a look at. Um, all right, guys, we are set. We got a pretty good list. Christian, you like Oxy this morning. Let's take a look at that over on YouTube. If you haven't done so already, hit that thumbs up. We appreciate it very much. Um, we'd love to get to our goal when we can, right? We're sitting at 112. We'd love to be at 250 plus. Um, that makes us very happy. Uh, Oxy this morning, pretty flat right now. Again, can look much uh, at the pre-market don't put too much weight on to that um daily is interesting had a good day on friday yeah with all the stuff going on with energy oil and all that stuff and this can always you know be in play just look out for the news make sure you're tuned into what's going on right um a great way to do that guys is tradingterminal.com right come over to tradingterminal.com and this website completely free no ads you notice that there's no ads around here so no pop-ups so very clean Come over here, click on breaking news, and you can get uh, our man Charlie there giving you updates of any uh, news that breaks out that can affect the market. So definitely take uh, advantage of that. Um, I think we're all set, Norm. Let's get to our weekly rundown. I don't see uh, any of the tickers that we might have missed at the moment. Let's see what's happening throughout the week, and then we'll come back and fine-tune uh, this list. All right. Anytime you want to check this out and figure out what we've gone on for the next couple of weeks, you can go to bearbulltraders.com slash webinars or click the webinars tab in the nav bar at the top of the top of the website. Uh, every Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, onboarding and technology with Carlos. You don't even have to be a member to go to go to this. If you're watching on YouTube and you've never been in our room, you can come put your email in uh, yeah. at the very top of the homepage. It has a capture about a uh, free class. You'll get a link a couple hours ahead of time to go check this out. Um, then on Tuesdays, we focus on strategy this week. We've got Andrew tomorrow night talking about moving averages, which ones he uses, why he uses them and how he uses them. And then, uh, next week will be, uh, Carlos talking about managing an open position. Carlos, when's your flight? Is that going to be an issue? Yeah. I was just looking at the day. I'm like, wait, I'm, I'm the following week. And yeah, that might need to be changed. Um, cause I, I traveled that day, so okay. I, I'm not so sure we'll it's going to work out. out. We'll figure we'll that figure out guys. Out. We'll let you know. Mm -hmm. We'll have something in its place. All right. Then on Wednesday, we've got psychology. Randy Howe, uh, this Wednesday, 8 p.m., talking about scared money, knowing better, but chasing losers. Bad idea. And then next week, uh, Dr. Kenneth Reed talking about handling pressure. Mentorship on Thursday with John at 11 and Thor at 8. Don't forget about tradingterminal.com. As Carlos mentioned, your free one-stop shop uh, for... Uh, financial info also you've got scanners there you've got all kinds of stuff news scanners uh and of course trading simulator uh, uh trading simulator 
uh, where you can practice your uh, trades on our free web-based replay simulator 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, haven't been in the room, you'd like to uh, you'd like to give it a shot. You can use the promo code PREMARKET24 for the intro membership. That'll give you seven calendar days, five trading in the days in the room with no obligation. It does not auto renew. It's a one-time payment. And then also, if you're looking to become an annual member or an elite member, you can use the promo code READ50 to get how, half off the elite annual membership and a free one-on-one -on -one coaching session with Dr. Kenneth Reed. All right, excellent, guys. Let's get to it this morning. Um, let's take a quick look at our list here, what we have. We are looking at BABA, NEO, uh, Tesla, and NVIDIA. And then some possibles here. We have Netflix, Amazon, Snap, and, and Oxy. Then we have our, our risky type stock this morning hitting 77% uh, up right now, up as, as much as almost 38 here. So this thing is just rocking and rolling. Again, extra cautious on this. It has news on it, which is nice, right? So it's good to see this type of volume, this type of movement with news. Um, that can always uh, uh, be fun. So, all right, uh, let's get to some levels here and um, we will get this party started, guys. So let's go ahead and look at BABA today. Again, a lot of Chinese stocks in play. If you missed it early this morning when we started, if you look at our gap down list, and you can also get this gap down list from Trading Terminal completely free on, on their scanners. And you can see here, uh, it is just a bunch of Chinese tickers this morning with the stuff that uh, is going on over there, as Storm mentioned. So um, you, you could pick your favorite. I'm not going to watch everything because most likely all of these are moving under the same catalyst, right? Um, if if they, I think they're all going to be moving pretty much the same depending on how the market wants to uh, react to that at the market open. So instead of watching everything on here, I just got two and then I'm going to leave myself open to some other ones and what, what possibly might open up in the market open. Right now, we only have four tickers on my main list. Um, there'll be some other ones that as we get closer to 930 or even at the open when we're looking at this turbo breakdown, turbo break up, which are my two favorite scanners. There's something I'll come up here. And then, of course, the whole reason of being part of a community, you guys are not going to call out anything great that you see. Uh, and we can always take advantage of that. Let's take a look at Baba guys down. You know, 11%. man, I gotta tell, I gotta yeah. tell you, even the usual suspects don't look that great to me today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I got. So, that's why I got yeah, a yeah, very light list. Yeah, so I only got four, man. Very light list today. And and uh, now that you mentioned that, Norm, these two here, like Baba and Neo, although they're moving, they got great volume. Um, I won't be shocked if we're getting into some chop into these, right? So we we really have to wait on these two. Baba and Neo specifically to see how the market really feels like, you know, 15, 30 minutes in, right? Um, so be very cautious. It's going to be a lot of movement, uh, especially with Neo. You guys is known for, we watch it so much, it's known for, you know, doing all of this. And then, you know, 30 minutes later, you see, okay, started to break out what I want to do, but I got stopped out three times on it already, right? So that happens a lot. So I'm um, waiting today, man. It's, it's key. Um, that, that is for sure. And then we have some possibles here that don't look great, but they were great last week. We'll see if anything can happen. I agree with you, man, 100%. Um, looking at Baba here, as far as the low of the pre-market, we are sitting at, what is this there? It's going to be, uh, oh, wait, I may miss it right here. It's going to be 62.58. Uh, so we will go ahead and slam a level there. And then uh, high of the pre-market at the moment is all the way up here at 66.85. Uh, and I'm just going to go over here and mark down this up. Uh, the most recent high right now. I know this is the pre-market high on a, on a funny candle, you know, first thing this morning open, but uh, pre-market open, but I'm going to mark this down here because we're seeing some good resistance there just the last couple of minutes. So that might be worth seeing uh, where that goes. That can be more important than the pre-market high. Uh, we're looking at NEO now. So NEO, um, well, as far as levels, let me finish here on BABA. Towards the top, guys, you got plenty. You got plenty. We're below our IPO. Norm mentioned that, so that's, you know, it's not a good sign. Uh, and if we go all the way down here, I marked a level at 57.59 off the weekly. So if you look at the weekly and go all the way back, you're going to see that 57.59 uh, level there. Um, so we're all set on Baba. Let's take a look over at NEO now. NEO this morning, we are uh, down 8.7. Again, another Chinese company struggling with the, the news and what has happened over the weekend. Uh, 971, low of the pre-market. High of the pre-market, very close to our highs and lows right on here. So I'm not going to mark this high of the pre-market. I think this will be more important. Um, but look at this area here, very similar to Baba, right? We bounced from the lows and we got this area where we're finding some kind of a, a resistance situation. So I'm going to mark this high down. I really like this one better, this 1098. I, I'm, and I'm, not, I'm actually going to mark that down. 10, 10, uh, 26, excuse me, 1027. 
right? I'm going to mark that down instead. You can see how strong the resistance is here. Yeah, we popped up a few times, but this is where the battle is happening, guys, right there. So 1027, we'll mark that down and see how that goes on NEO. Towards the top, you have plenty. Um, and I can't remember if we had anything over under the pre-market low. Um, I know it's been a while since NEO has been down here. Uh, let's go back and remind ourselves. Let's go look at a monthly. Oh, yeah, we got some stuff here at the fives. Um, so on the monthly, 784. Uh, and then in here, we'll look at the whole dollar. So we'll see how that goes. 784 is the big level on the monthly there. Um, you know what? I want to go back and look at the weekly because that's still a decent size gap. Let's see if the weekly can fine tune this a little bit better for us. Uh, not by much. 784 is still the big, the big level there that I like. So we'll leave it as that. Let's not push something that's not there or come up with levels. Um, so yeah, we're good here, guys. Neo 971. And as it goes down, guys, as it drops from 971 here, if it does decide to do that, um, you know, 950, $9, these whole dollar numbers are going to be uh, important. You're going to see a little bit of hesitation as they try, they try to break down from that. So keep that in mind. All right, here's Tesla, guys, looking really good this morning. Tons of volume, obviously, price reduction in China. Not a good sign, not a good deal for these guys. 205.61 uh, is the low of the pre-market. You have a lot of support here as well, right? If you look at Thursday and Friday, you see that there a week, a week and a half before, you see more support happening all around this area. You're slightly above that now. So this is an area where, you know, Tesla likes to stay above, above that. So um, let's see if that can hold and prove true for today. Towards the top, high of the pre-market, uh, all the way above the previous day close. I mean, it's in the green, the high of the pre-market, uh, heading at a 216.66. Since then, since the, the early hours of the morning, this thing has dropped down to 205 and just a little sideways action for the most part. I like this area here. Again, um, a lot of these tickers, Baba, Neo as well, bouncing back from the lows and kind of creating a little area of resistance here that's worth noting. So around 210, uh, you can mark a level there and just kind of keep that there. You can see also here a little bit of action uh, as well as far as support and resistance. So. That looks good. I like Tesla today, guys. Probably one of the best tickers this morning um, so far as we uh, continue to build this list. Over here, we have, last but not least, on the main list, we have uh, NVIDIA. And NVIDIA's daily looks real nice. And uh, we had the, the bottom on this thing uh, last week. And you can see here how great this thing has recovered. Um, and uh, right now, looking good. Up up slightly, but you know, up nicely from the lows, though. Although you're not seeing that in the in the percentage this morning it is up nicely from the lows 125.96 is the high of the pre-market and that's all you really need if you want to get fancy you can mark down the low of the pre-market as well that's fine 122.60 um, but outside of that if you look at this list i mean you you have tons of stuff happening here guys this area this previous day close line uh has seen a lot of action as you can see there so Highs and lows, they are, are doing a pretty good job surrounding everything. I don't think you need to add anything. Unless we start breaking out of 128, then we can look to some levels up here. But for the most part, uh, you are set on NVIDIA there. Uh, let's take a look over at uh, Netflix. We have some other ones on here. Netflix, man, insane move on Friday. Uh, this morning as well, if I look at this 185, you know, this it, it might not see that like great volume if you compare it to other tickers that don't get as much volume. This is a great volume for Netflix. So um, I actually might move up Netflix. I'm not saying we're going to get some crazy day like this when I start closing this gap. Um, I don't think it's, that's the case. But if uh, if it tends if it can if it can happen, you know, you're, you're setting up this morning properly to do that. I'll tell you that much. We just need the spy to help us if it's, that's the plan for Netflix today. But um, I'm going to add it to the list. Netflix 285 is low of the pre market. The high of the pre market right now. You're looking at uh, 292. And in there, you have a slightly above the the, the the highs from Friday. So that's good. We're looking good here. We're not selling down. We're, we're slamming against the highs again. That is a good, good sign for Netflix. So um, like what I'm seeing there, let's see if that is going to mean anything at the market open, if we're going to get some kind of movement uh, with some more strength into, into the move up here. So I'm going to move Netflix up on my main list. We'll add this here. We'll delete it from here. And we don't have a whole lot to watch today. So we have room for Netflix for so something that... Uh, can potentially uh, get us somewhere here. We have Amazon, great volume this morning. Okay, pre-market activity. Uh, Snap is not, not doing a whole lot. This is, a, again, just a possible, more of entertainment to see what it does and how it's affected today after such a drop last week. And then we have Oxy here, which uh, can be explosive at any time. All right, 
that is said, guys, we are, we're looking we're looking decent. Not great. It's not a blockbuster list by any means, but we're, we're looking okay. Over on YouTube, uh, JP. Is that JP Morgan? JP. No, it's not JP Morgan. What is it? JP Morgan is, uh, what's the ticker? JPM. JPM. There we go. Uh, no, not seeing anything on that. Uh, if that's what you meant, um, I'm not seeing nothing at the moment. I'm not saying the banking stocks can go uh, active, but right now I'm not seeing a whole lot on this, which is typical banking type stocks, right? They don't usually get great volume uh, unless they have earnings or some kind of big news that's going to cost them uh, to move. Uh, AMD, almost 700,000 in volume. Let's take a look. That's good volume for AMD. Uh, yeah, very similar to Amazon. Look at look at the daily on, on AMD, by the way. We, we've been seeing this build build up here. I mean, it really... I know it's a lot of stocks bouncing, but AMD is just like flatlining. Like it does not want to go lower than 57, which is crazy to think that AMD is at 57. Um, yeah, this, is, this, this, this thing here, whatever it's doing. I mean, if I look at other tickers, it don't look like that, right? Look at NVIDIA. Doesn't look like that. Let's take a look at Apple. Uh, yeah, this is very strange. Let's take a look at Amazon on the daily. Yeah, uh, there's nothing else. What else is comparable to that, guys? Give me some idea. Even TSM, which is, you know, semis. Uh, you know, it just doesn't look like AMD. AMD is a very interesting daily. So let's add AMD to the list here. Uh, 700,000 uh, with their, their interesting sideways action. And this, 50, what is 57? Is 57, 50 something? Is that something big? I mean... Is, does that mean anything for anybody? Um, well, not for anybody, for Amazon. I mean, for uh, AMD. Why is this sounding? Let's go here. Let's go back. What What is that 57? Because I feel like, yeah, it's not. there's nothing on there. We're way below our IPO price on this thing. So I'm not sure what that is, but something with that price that it likes. Uh, Peter might know. Peter's an AMD uh, uh, most valuable player, a most valuable trader. Um so 5750 there. Uh, AMD will explode. Yeah, a lot of people like AMD today um, for a play. I don't know if it's going to explode, but uh, it's, it's setting up for a nice uh, pop whenever the market decides to be strong. And also not just the market, also just the semis as well, right? Because um, semis got the, kind of the, like their own thing going on also. 5761 was a pack of fr for Friday. Okay, yeah, but it's been this. It has been going on for a while, though, right? It has just this is Friday, but look, this thing has been going on for a while. So just curious, interesting. Um, all right, we got Thor coming in with his list, guys. Do not forget. I think we have like what um, two spots left, three spots left on uh, our live trading workshop for November second. So if you have not signed up yet, I think there's like two spots left. And and again, just remind that we we cannot. Um, we can we can add more. So it's like really two spots. It's not trying to build FOMO. It's two spots left. Uh, and we cannot uh, make that any, any bigger because just the venue doesn't allow us. There's just no space. So take advantage if you haven't done so. Um, the whole crew is going to be there. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be very educational. Uh, and looking forward to all the presenters are going to present. It's going to be a... It's gonna be it's gonna be very very nice and looking forward to meeting you guys as well looking forward to seeing you guys down there and kind of uh put some faces to the names it's always a lot of fun all right um hit that thumbs up over on youtube guys We're sitting at a 159 we got time for questions anything you guys like this morning that we have not looked at have you guys looked at baba oh yes we have yes we have and i, I like i like baba and neil today um but i know that i gotta wait for these i gotta i gotta you know uh, make sure i don't get to trigger happy and let this thing settle in and see how they, they're going to trade. How is the market going to um, react, the market open, going to react to the all, overall Chinese news today? So um, I got Baba and Neo for that, both with just incredible volume. I mean, I can't remember when was the last time we saw Neo uh, with 4.3 million shares traded. <laughs> so here's, uh, here's uh, uh, what um, Peter thinks about AMD this morning. <laughs> Straight hot sauce there. So yeah great stuff man. <laughs> uh looking for a potential squeeze we we might we, we might get it i mean amd is just very very interesting right now all right excellent um taking a look at the spy see what's going on there spies uh showing some strength which is nice so many people think this is the bottom you know people are calling this action here the bottom of this uh, bear market, downturn, recession, whatever you want to call it. Everybody has their own different labels depending on, you know, how you feel. Um, that's the thing now. 
Um, but I wonder how, I wonder what you guys think. So head over to my Twitter. I actually, I actually put a post up with a poll so you guys can vote to see if you're in the camp that this is the bottom or you're in the camp that no, there's more pain to come. So head over there at Twitter. Actually, I'll get you guys the link. Um, so you guys can uh, vote and see, uh, I would love to know what you guys think. And also comment, let me know what you guys are thinking about, about that and how do you feel. The great thing about day trading though, is that, you know, not that we care less, we always want the market to go up as a human being. As a trader, as an investor, you want the market to go up. You want things to be good. Um, but, you know, it, it, as a day trader specifically, you really don't care much what it does, right? We're looking for opportunities every day, which is one of the great things about being a, a trader. You know, you could just look at a, um, you could just look at, you know, what's in play for today, right? You don't really care about what's going to happen, you know, a two months, three months down from now uh, as a trader, right? So very important to, to understand that. But yeah, we'd love to know what you guys think there. Um, and we'll see how, how that turns out. Uh, currently, oh, there's some people currently, uh, there's some people think that there's more downside coming more, nope, more pain to come. So that's what it is right now. We'll see how that ends later today. Um, also I want to give a shout out before we let, let you guys go to Susan. It is Susan, follow Susan, by the way, over at, uh, ask Susan Rissy five. She, she's, uh, had her 10 year anniversary. Here she is. So congratulations, Susan, one of our moderators. She's amazing. I'm actually going to meet her down in Florida. So looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, congratulations on your 10 year uh, anniversary. Shout out to Susan. Um, all right, guys, we are all set. We are pretty good here. Wait for some moderators to throw out their list here. Um, we are we have Baba, Neo, Tesla, um, uh, NVIDIA, Netflix, and I have AMD. Things all of them bouncing back a little bit could be the spies causing some of that. But um, a pretty uh, pretty decent list for a Monday. Um, not great. I think we got some volume here, but it should get better as we move uh, we move forward. Um, and as far as earnings, I didn't see any great names today. Tomorrow we do have some really good names coming up on earnings, so I did see that. Um, but today I didn't see anything that I like as far as earnings. Let's head over to our tradingterminal.com. You click on calendar. Uh, and you can see uh, what's coming up. So yeah, I didn't like it. not much for today. Tomorrow we do have some uh, uh, interesting names. Right? Obviously, Coca Cola, Discover, um, and throughout the week we have some more coming up. Amazon. We got uh, some pretty good names for waste management. So we got some good stuff happening here uh, throughout the week. Um, Norm, anything you're looking forward to as far as earnings or anything you have on your list that you like? I mean, like you said, later in the week, I know lot. I think Logitech's after the bell today. That might be decent. That's the best one I've seen so far. But okay. obviously, yeah. it's better as we get later in the week. I know GM announces uh, before the bell tomorrow, and Ford, mm -hmm. I believe, is on Wednesday. But Amazon, yeah. Apple, uh, they're on deck uh, coming up later this week. So should be some good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Those are always um, those names you mentioned are always good when we do have. Um, uh, earning opportunity. Um, all right, guys, uh, we are looking good. Let's check out this PCVX. What are we doing here? So we're moving sideways, which is good. We're not dropping. So that means, you know, that the news is sticking, at least for now. Uh, th th there could be some opportunities here at the market open if volume comes in. Can I stress how cautious you have to be with, with that one today? Uh, I was looking at this. The spread in this is is very nasty at times. You could I was tell. watching it earlier yeah. once you started doing levels and and when it was up in that peak around 37 mm -hmm. you know above 3750 the spread would get to like 80 cents at times so yeah and, and you could one indicator and I didn't look at the extra spread but one indicator at times I can tell you that is guys look at this move this is a two dollar move so one minute candle here 36 uh something to about 38 right you got almost a two dollar maybe a dollar and a half move there and if you look at the bottom, this is happening with 50,000 shares. Typically, when you see these type of big moves with that many number of shares, with that little number of shares, the spread is not great. You know, you're bouncing around too much, and, and that's that's uh, that's concerning, right? You take a couple of shares, and immediately you're down, you know, 300 bucks, and you gotta, you know, you gotta get over uh, uh, into the green, uh, you know, on that spread. That could be difficult. That could be the difference between a winning trade and a losing trade, right there. Well, you have such a bad spread. Um, so very, very careful. Uh, okay, excellent. Um, there you go. Let's go, let's go ahead. Look at this. Going for another pop now, it looks like. Um, so time to get some volume as we're speaking about this thing. Uh, what should be the spread? Andrew, uh, I mean, 
you want it to be as tight as possible, yes. right? But you want to be pennies, two cents, three cents at most, right? On a stock that's thirty six dollars. Apple trades consistently at at a penny, right? A I, penny. Yeah, I've never you know, seen a that. lot of these at a penny. Now, yeah. I mean, you've got tickers we trade all the time that have bigger spreads. Tesla is a perfect. Right, Tesla is one of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and it move it, it. That's the reason Tesla moves around so much. But you have uh -huh. to account for that. Reduce your share size to to lower your risk and wider give it stop. a wider stop. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. you just get chopped up on it. Another one like that. At times, Nvidia not as bad as what we're seeing here. But at times, Nvidia same thing. Netflix same thing. So. You know, you learn that as you trade these stocks more often and, and, and become more familiar with how they move, how their their action is, and you uh, like you say, you you account for that. Good news is PVC is the is in the queues and not the and Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right, and uh, I think we are so XOM is in our calendar, but it should be reporting on uh, alongside CVX. Okay, so that that'll be in the list tomorrow. Usually XOM, uh, when it has earnings, it, it's usually on our list. On the gap down, they tend to move. Look at this gappers list. Just trying to see if there's anything else that we might have missed here. But it looks like we're covered. Everything else continues to be overall Chinese tickers. PBR, is PBR Chinese? No. No? That's PBR? Brazilian. Oh, okay. Brazilian uh, yeah. oil. All right. So this one's coming up here. Down 4% at 300 and... Uh, in 13, looks like something might have triggered because they're, they're starting to get a little rampant volume here. Um, so something might have triggered there on PBR. I'm going to put them as a possible. They're not great, but once in a while we see we see some stuff happening out of there. But again, looks like something might have been released here on PBR. Um, Google, you know what? I, I, I haven't traded Google and I'm not a fan of the way it moves. Um, even after their reverse split, they, it, wasn't they a it was a, it was just a split not a reverse sorry split, split, but, yeah, um, yeah yeah I, I i've watched it a couple of times to see if post split it would be decent i mean amazon was yeah, amazon is difference. decent you can trade it google is terrible yeah alphabet google whatever you want to call it yeah, yeah it, it is really bad guys i don't i don't and there's better things to trade that's for sure that's for sure all right, guys, let's take a look at our moderators list. I have Thor and Peter uh, on deck already. We'll see if anybody else wants to join that list. But I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and resize this and get this ready here so we can see what our moderators are watching this morning. Um, as I'm doing this, guys, thank you so much for the 180 likes. We appreciate it. It does help us out a ton in the channel to grow and, uh, and, uh, and also build my confidence in norms. <laughs> Not really, but <laughs> we, we do enjoy it. No, we get paid a penny per each like. Yes, we have to split. That's so right. It's... Help us get those pennies. <laughs> but no, man, we are really, really appreciate it, guys. It does help out the channel a ton. We're trying to get 100,000. We're at, uh, what, 69, 70? Um, almost at 70,000. Yeah, subs. so we're trying to get 100. Uh, that'll be nice. We'll do some We'll do some celebration or something. We'll come up with something. Um, but if you can help us, yeah, that'd be great. All right, over here, guys, let's take a look at our moderators list this morning. We are, oh, did not want to do that. There we go. Just want to expand this a little bit here so I can move this down. And we have us just Thor and Peter right now. So no SPACs, no IPOs. Thor looking at IBM, Netflix, XOM, Roblox, uh, BA, and WBD. Uh, Peter, of course, AMD, Tesla, BABA. And his secondary list, a couple of Chinese tickers here, Baidu and XPEF. And then on the other side of things, he has uh, Oxy um, as well. So... Um, very similar list to what uh, I'm watching as well. Again, a couple of, of Chinese tickers. And then we have Tesla, NVIDIA, Netflix, and AMD from our usual suspects list. And here's Brian, the man of the hour, looking at PCVX. Again, guys, treat this like a low flow. It's moving like one today. Watch out for that spread at the market open as well. Um, PDD, Tesla, XLE, and also NVIDIA uh, on his list. So uh, that is what we have, guys. And uh, we are all set. Guys, thank you so much for joining the pre-market show over on YouTube. We're going to continue here in our chat. Brian is up next trading live. Um, if you want to check us out, guys, over on YouTube, um, you know, we have an onboarding class tonight at 8 p.m. If you're new in the chat room, new member, head on there as well um, to look at our, our over onboarding class with Mike and I. We go over everything about the chat room, everything about our community, just kind of give you a real inside look of how to get started, what to do next, and what this journey is all about. So thank you, guys. Trade safe. Hit that thumbs up, and I will see you guys uh, tonight. Take care, guys. Trade safe.